You guys, welcome to the Intuition Analyzed podcast, which is a show all about connecting you with your intuitive voice and becoming a happier, healthier, more creative person along the way. Now, you guys tell me how perfect is this? We're doing an episode today on the idea of minimalism in your thought life, and this episode itself is a very minimal episode. You will notice if you're watching this on YouTube that we've gone back to audio only, You guys remember the days when uh, podcasts were not video form? (laughs) Like, there was no such thing as video podcasting. It was all just audio waves being transmitted over the network. That's what we're doing today. And if you're wondering why that's the case, why we're talking about minimalism, why we're doing a minimal episode, I'll tell you guys just a quick story. This week, or this past week, I actually just moved from my, my old apartment in downtown Birmingham to another apartment just about 20 minutes away. It's a new space. I'm living with some really close friends of mine now. It's a good situation. But those moves, as you guys know, can just be incredibly exhausting. And throughout that process of moving, of packing up everything that I own into boxes and putting it on the truck and getting it over here and then unpacking, going through every single item that I own really got me thinking about minimalism, which is something that has been a part of my life for a number of years now. And it really got me thinking on this question, what is unnecessary? Probably the foundational question of minimalism, but I don't want to talk about that question today as it relates to your physical stuff, okay? I actually want to talk about what is unnecessary as it relates to your thought life. Because again, this show is all about you and your internal thought life. It's about your connection to your intuitive voice. And so... Frankly, I don't care how much stuff you own. I don't care if you want to live as a Tibetan monk and own like two things or live in a mansion with multiple cars and tons of belongings. It doesn't matter to me. Okay, what matters to me is whether or not the things in your life or the thoughts or feelings in your life are valuable, meaningful to you, whether they are guiding you towards your intuitive self or away from your intuitive self? Because isn't that the case? Isn't it just that everything that we own, everything that we think, everything that we do either brings us closer to ourselves or more away from ourselves? And where I really want you guys to get is to a place where you understand the difference between those things. What is unnecessary is such a powerful question because it helps you identify those things that are pulling you away. If you're struggling to figure out what your intuitive voice is is trying to say to you, oftentimes it can be because there is just too much else going on around you. And that's the power of the question, what is unnecessary? And this is also personal to you. We're going to talk more about how to answer this question in just a second. But I also want to emphasize to you that this is going to be personalized and tailored to your needs because there are just as many brands of minimalism as there are people. You know, just as we talked about in the last episode about the creative education dilemma, how every artist is on a different path, starting from a different place, going to a different place, seeking some different goal. The same exact thing is true of minimalism. It's not about what is valuable, period. It's about what is valuable to you. Only you can find, define, and seek out yourself. All I can really do is ask questions. All I can really do is give you steps to take, strategies to follow, ways to think about these things. So let me give you this this simple guide and we'll get out of here because again, we're keeping this episode minimal. I want to think about what is unnecessary to your thought life, to your mind, to the things that you think and feel and experience in terms of two main sectors, the external and the internal, because that really is what you're dealing with. You know, there's the things in the world around you that can remind you of who you are, how you think, what you feel intuitively and instinctively, where you're trying to go in your life, and those things that distract you. And the same is true of your internal mind. There are thoughts and patterns of thinking and feeling that can, again, align you with yourself and those that can pull you away. And the biggest thing we need to do is distinguish between those two and and work towards minimizing that which is unimportant and emphasizing that which is important. And through that process, you're getting closer to yourself. You're getting clearer on your path. You're getting this better sense of self that is just so, so important. I mean, it's it's so huge because it impacts everything that you do. You know, it's going to impact your art. It's going to impact your relationships with other people. 
It's everything. So as we talk about the external world, decluttering what is in your environment, a lot of it can be attentional. You know, it, it can be as simple as what I did this past weekend, but it can also be you know, the things that you choose to spend your time thinking about. I think the main ones for a lot of people, at least for me, is social media and the news, right? We, we watch too much of the news. I mean, it can, it can make us panicky. You know, we spend too much time on social media. We just start comparing ourselves to other people, you know, looking at that, that perfect picture of other people's lives and ignoring the wonderful things that could be happening in our own. I mean, this is like just basic level one stuff. You've got to be able to assess how much of that is helping you, how much of that is inspiring you, and how much of that is getting in the way. On a certain level, it's good to keep up with the news. It's good to keep up with what's going on in the world because it helps you shape your opinions about things, your thoughts, your ideas. It's good to keep up with the things that your friends are doing on social media or the, the content creators that you follow. Because again, that can inspire you, but also <laughs> it can distract you from the things that are important to you. It can distract you from your own voice. And that's kind of the thing is, is really it comes down to voices. The media is a voice. Your friends are a voice. Content creators that you follow are a voice and you are a voice. And there really are, you know, two things that can happen is when you're interacting with other voices outside of your own life, externally, they can have a conversation with you or they can drown you out. And a lot of that is dependent on context. It depends on where you're at that day. It also depends on what those voices are saying and whether they make any sense to you, whether they're aligned with who you are. But it's something that you have the power to control. You are 100% allowed to decide who you spend time with, who you follow on social media and who you don't, and what you choose to listen to and bring into your life. And that's really the message I'm trying to get across in this external section. To declutter the internal space starts with decluttering the external space and just knowing what you can take in and, and what is just going to cause you stress at the end of the day. So that's it. I would just ask you that question. What is unnecessary in your external world? Is it too much time on Instagram? Is it too much time watching the news? Is it certain outlets that you just don't need to engage with or certain activities that you don't need to be doing on a regular basis? Again, I can't tell you what it is, but I would say that if you, if you have trouble answering the question, what value does this bring me? Then it probably isn't bringing you any value. Now, as we transition into talking about the internal world, this is where things I think get even more important. You know, we have to deal with the external, we have to deal with our intake from outside sources, but we also have to deal with our internal world, the things that we focus on, whether the outside world is telling us to or not. And this might just be me, but I mean, my my thoughts, feelings, and experiences can oftentimes be a roller coaster. I mean, can, I'm probably gonna get an amen from that, uh, from somebody. Because I know that this is a thing. I mean, our brains are just constantly generating thoughts, feelings, ideas, suggestions. It's kind of what your brain does. I mean, it's an idea machine. And sometimes it just doesn't seem to care whether those ideas are useful, whether those are helping you or hurting you, whether they're inspiring you or just holding you back. And so internally, we ask the same question, what is unnecessary? What are unnecessary thought patterns? What are unnecessary feelings that we don't need to fixate on. It's a difficult space because when we're talking about the intuitive voice, you know, I've said this before, every voice seeks and longs to be heard and it's important to give credence to that. It's important to listen to the different things that are going on in your mind, whether it's some hyper analytical thought about something or it's this intuitive feeling that you're getting. You have to listen to those voices, but you also don't have to fixate. And, and only you can decide what the limits should be on that. But I find that both sides of this equation are, are very important. A way that I've found to really flush out those thoughts that are just kind of leading you down a bad path is taking some time to write it down or speak it out, like speak it out physically. When thoughts and feelings are kind of running rampant and taking you in different ways, it can be really helpful to just take some time, sit down and just get it out of your head. So this practice that I've been doing lately that's been really helpful has been pretty much every day when I wake up. The first thing I do is I take out my phone, I go into an audio recording app and I record just a pure stream of consciousness 
answering the question, where is my energy at today? And that's like an all encompassing question. It's what am I thinking about this morning? What am I feeling this morning? What is my brain experiencing on this brand new day? With no no drama, no expectations, no judgment, just getting those things out of your head. And that's so helpful because the irony of it is when you allow all of that, what ends up happening is you become so much more flexible. You end up in a place where you can look at it much more objectively, just like you're unpacking the boxes of your own mind and you can decide, okay, well, how much of this is really important? You know, for me today, it was, I don't really need to do video today. I don't really need to talk about the things I thought I was going to talk about. I don't need all that stress. Maybe what I need, maybe what the people need is just to talk about what's actually on my mind right now, which is minimalism, which is this idea of decluttering our thought life. Maybe that's what's good for today. That's what should be focused on. That's what should be emphasized. And that's the transition that I hope you're able to experience when you just allow this stuff to come out. One of the challenges of art, one of the challenges of connecting with your intuitive voice is finding that focal point because sometimes the mess of everything that's going on is just so cluttered that we don't even know which part of it should be emphasized. You know, you wake up in a storm or a roller coaster of emotions and experiences or your art piece is just going so many different directions, it's hard to tell which one is definitive. That's just a part of life. I mean, that's probably the, one of the most fundamental challenges of connecting with your intuitive self is finding the part of the voice or the one voice among the many that is the most you. When you don't know what is the most valuable, that's where we can fall back to that question we've been asking today, what is unnecessary? Because if you can't find the thing that is valuable, the best thing that you can do is remove all of the things that are not valuable one by one until something that is valuable finally emerges. So I hope you guys enjoyed this really minimal kind of strange stream of consciousness episode. We might do more of these style episodes in the future. If you guys enjoyed them, let me know what you think in the comments down below the YouTube video. And as always, thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate each and every one of you, and I will catch you in the next episode. Take care.